Dr. Song, there was a landmark study that was, uh, that was just stopped early because the results were so significant it involved a lot of patients controlling their high blood pressure. And can you review that, uh, the, the basic results of that study or the design of the study? Sure. So uh, the SPRINT trial was a randomized controlled trial that involved 9,000 Americans all over the country at um, I think about 100 different centers. And what they did was they placed patients in two different arms. Uh, one arm received a goal blood pressure less than 140, which is the current recommended guidelines, and the other received a guideline of less than 20, 120, excuse me, for the upper number, the systolic blood pressure number. And they found that the patients in the lower blood pressure range group actually did much better. That's a pretty low blood pressure, it, and it's not easy to attain that. It must have taken quite a bit of medication to get the blood pressure down. So according to the study, which hasn't been published in its entirety, but from what we can tell, the group that had the lower blood pressure range had an average blood pressure medication of three, and the other group had two. So it was one more medication that they had. And presumably, the more medications you take, the more potential side effects and drug interactions that you face. Uh, with every benefit, there is a risk, and having another medication could mean more side effects and could mean more interactions. But then again, the trial did show of the patients who had the lower blood pressure range, um, there was a third less of all cardiovascular outcomes, so strokes, heart disease, including heart failure and heart attacks. Because right now, I think the number that sticks in a lot of uh, people's head is 140. Mm -hmm. And I know that's the most common recommended dose. And mm -hmm. actually, even some of the recommendations is that maybe before this trial was you can make maybe have the blood pressure go up to 150. Mm -hmm. um, so this really is a change. So just emphasize that in terms of you know, what that may mean and you know, what are the things that people should be thinking about and maybe doing. Mm -hmm. I think that what's interesting about this trial is that it really emphasizes the, the medication management portion, but there are a lot of things that you can do to reduce your blood pressure besides just medicine. So eating healthily, being active, taking your medications regularly, of course. So besides just the medication portion, you know, you, you need to lower your blood pressure healthily in a multiple different ways. It's interesting, but not only eating healthy, but eating less. Eating less, that's right. <laughs> because that's it, right. It, 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 I'm, I think it's pretty clear that if you are thin and you exercise a lot, you're less likely to have high mm -hmm. blood pressure. Isn't that right? Um, that is true. So if you maintain a healthy uh, body mass index and you eat a primarily Mediterranean diet, that's actually beneficial for living longer. That's true. And reducing your blood pressure. And uh, what other recommendations would you have? So I think for now, this is a really exciting advance in sort of treating blood pressure and helping to reduce the manifestations of high blood pressure like stroke and heart disease. And I think it's important to keep talking to your doctors as the study results come out and being hopeful that there is something that you can do to reduce your risk of death and your risk of stroke and continuing to keep the conversation open about what should I be doing to improve my health, not just by medications, but also by lifestyle. That sounds great. great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.